Hello, welcome to Writer's Rain Crochet. Today we are going to be working on this fox slash wolf um, basket that's done with um, t-shirt yarn. I will go ahead and put the link to the Etsy pattern below if you guys would like to go pick that up and work alongside me. Let's go ahead and get started, okay? Um, so um, I am using an eight millimeter hook. T-shirt yarn comes in different thicknesses and sometimes you're gonna have to go up a hook size, sometimes you'll wanna go down a hook size. Um, it really is a big playing game whether or not it's gonna work well or not. So um, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with our base and then we're gonna move up our sides. So let's start with the magic ring and six single crochets in the magic ring. Six. Okay, so we're going to be connecting a little different than we used to, we usually do with a slip stitch. Let's go ahead for this first round, beginning round. We're going to go ahead and pull our yarn that was on our hook. We're going to come to the back side of our first stitch. We're going to wrap our yarn. And we're going to slide it through. Okay, and then take this loop that we just created and wrap it around, go around your product like this. That is one way to help get us to where we need to be, but um, it is not ideal for a basket. It's only ideal for like a coaster um, because then your loop is gonna be so big to go around your product um, or your project. So this way, um, we I just start with this one because it's the, the other one's so hard to do. So now we're gonna take this, uh, working yarn and we're going to pull this tight. I'm going to get everything pulled nice and tight. So what we're going into, it's called a waistcoat stitch. We're going to be crocheting down here, not up here where we're used to being used to crochet in here. Okay. So the best way that I have found to do this is to look at where these two come together there's a little spot right here is where you're going to want to go. And if you angle your hook just like about like this towards your left, your hook will go right into that. Okay? So let's go ahead and get started. If this beginning part is too hard to do, then go ahead and just do your regular single crochets and then we'll bring that up. two rounds of regular single crochets and then you can jump in and do it this way. Um, I know in the very beginning it was very, very difficult for me to do. Okay, so let's go ahead and chain with this right here. to the left and we're going to come through and you should have t-shirt or yarn or whatever on both sides of this hook so and we bring it up so that's one go right back in there's two you will get a feel for this when you push that in you'll know whether or not you caught it 
because one's gonna be real swift and smooth and the other one can be a little bit more tension trying to get in there. So let's go ahead and like see that one, that slipped way too easy and I could feel that I wasn't at the right angle to get that there. Now I know it's split, you'll feel it. It takes time, but you'll get it. This one's hiding back down in here. Always remember, just if you like, where the heck do I go? It's gonna be right in between where these two connect. This is the, working this as a workout. It is definitely not like making a blanket with a big old hook. It is like arm muscles, you'll be sore, your back will be sore. Okay, so right now I have 11. This is number one. What we're gonna do is bring our 12th one in now over to here. In that same hold. It is always gonna look a little different at the very end and at the very beginning of the round than it does at the rest of the round. So, okay, so leave your stitch marker in, okay? So what we wanna do now, instead of making it real big and wrapping it around our, our project, we're gonna go ahead and do it this way. So make your loop, go into the back, from the back, and we're gonna pull it through. Then our working yarn, we want to pull through and then we're gonna go straight into our next single crochet. That is going to be where this stitch is at here. Okay, so this one here is always such a booger to get, but it lets you know, cause you, have, you wanna have a tendency to jump right here cause it's so nice and pretty and open and you're like, oh my gosh, I can see that. So I know what I'm doing. It's not, it's gonna be back in here. Then we pull up. Grab our yarn and pull through. Whoops, I'm so sorry. Pull up. Take our hook off, flip it around, and then pull through. We are gonna do a lot more of these connections, so you guys are okay if you can just get up here. We'll do it again together and hopefully it'll be a little bigger and I won't struggle as much either. Okay, now, this right here has now become our first single crochet. So what we, you may want to do, this is going to be, like I said, up to you guys to help you guys just remember, hey, this is the first, this is where I'm supposed to go, right next to this uh, stitch marker. You can use whatever type of stitch marker you prefer. Um, if you want to just get one of these uh, and, and put it in there like that, that's fine too, whatever it is that makes it easier for you guys to um, know what that first stitch is. So now we're gonna do a single crochet increase. The one thing we do not wanna do when it comes to baskets is to put increases on top of each other. That is something we do not wanna do if we can help it. So what I'm gonna do um, here, we do have a bunch of more rounds, so it is not gonna bother us any. I personally would put I gotta move that. I would put my second single crochet in the same spot I pulled up from, like this. So that's my increase, right? And then I would do my single crochet here. Because now my increase is not on top of any stitches. And then again, our increase And our single crochet. So something else about this, 
you wanna really be aware, it is not easy to pull out your work when you're doing a waistcoat stitch. It just is not. Because we're wrapping and twisting and all that with the yarn, it'll get a, it'll get boogered up and it's not like, ooh, brr, pull it out and that's easy. So I would always go ahead and before you connect, make sure that your count is correct and you have what you need to have before we do that invisible connection, okay? And, and see again, you can see where my yarn is getting split and you really want that split to be there. And then I'm gonna go back to a single crochet. And then an increase. You will have to learn to have very little tension um, when you're working on um, baskets or you will give yourself such a, you'll be so sore in the morning um, in the beginning, I could only crochet like an hour. And then I was like totally toast. I was so done, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it anymore. Um, I'm getting better at my tension. Um, but at the same time, right, we want a basket nice and tight so it holds its shape. But how do you find that middle between not killing yourself, but not having a droopy basket at the same time. So it's always going to be a little bit of a game. Okay, so I'm back up here. We started with an increase right here, correct? Correct. So we needed to end with a single crochet and that's going to be in this one. And again, if you're going to go around and you're going to count Oh man, I can't get this thing straight. I don't typically increase right here. I just go for it. Um, so we know that down in here, this is one stitch. Here's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, so I still need one more stitch to make this 18. And that works out great because there really should be one right there. Okay, 18 stitches around. Here we go. Okay, ready? We're gonna pull it out. Go through the top. Bring it in. And pull through, pull it nice and tight. Pull the working yarn from the back to the front, we're gonna go into the first stitch. That's always the hardest one to get. Like always, we're gonna pull up, flip our hook, and pull it through. And now we've started with our first stitch of our next round. And now we're going to move on to, so what we wanna do is have you guys do this all the way around until you guys are at five single crochet increases. Um, do, not, do not stack your increases. They will not make a circle, it will become like a hexagon and it's not gonna work very good at all for a basket, that is not what we want. So just make your pattern so that, um, because right now I'm on two single crochet increases, so I'll go ahead and just do two single crochet and then my increase over here. And that's gonna get us to where we need to go. See, there's that V, so there's one, it's one, that's two, and here's my increase. So of course, because we are we started with six single crochets, we are increasing by six each round. And we're gonna go ahead and keep working the way that we've been working. Okay, let me, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do one more round here um, and then show you guys your connection one more time and then you guys can 
uh, rewind it if you need to. So we did one, two single crochet increase, one, two single crochet. There's our V's right in there. See the two connections. Increase. One. Two. Increase. Now you could always do this with um, any other type of yarn. Um, I like this t-shirt yarn. I, I picked some up and I was like, I'm pretty excited about learning how to do the bas basketing and all that. Um, it's firmer, it's sharper looking, and then you don't have like a super fuzzy basket. Um, it has a real nice, uh, a much better clean cut look. And I do promise if you guys have not worked with this stuff before, it will get better. Just the problem is I think you fight it. We try to do it like crochet and it just isn't done like that. Um, it just isn't as smooth. It's a different, a whole different, a horse of a different color. Two. And this bottom is the worst. The sides get so much better. Once we can just get through this, this base, um, it will be a lot, lot better. Okay, I got one. I got two. And then we're going to have our increase is going to be right here where that V is here. Okay. So we're looking pretty good so far, right? Look how nice that makes that look versus doing a standard single crochet um, increases around. If, this, if you hate this and it's driving you nuts, go ahead and just do a base up to five single crochet decreases or five single crochet increase. Um, the problem with it is it may not be the same kind of size at the bottom. I would try at least, if you want, do your first couple rounds, you're up to your um, increase, up to your 12 stitches, but see how far we are dropping down. It's giving us a little bit more girth than we would have um, otherwise. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you one more time how we're gonna hook this, and I'll try to have this be as clean as possible for you because it took me forever to get it. So we're going to go ahead and take our hook out. We're going to come from the back. You do not want this loop too big, and you will also start to learn what size you need that to be as you are working. We're going to pull that through and tighten it up. Pull our working yarn through. Okay. We're going to go straight down into our first stitch, which is right here. Bring the working yarn up. Now we have to take our hook out, flip it around, and pull it through. And I hope that that is how I did it before, but I probably didn't. So we'll have to see how that works out. Okay, so now we are going to be on three single crochet increases. We wanna do the same thing until we have five. So we're gonna be about yay big, okay? Um, and I will meet you guys back here once you get that much done. Again, don't, do not stack. You wanna look and see. After a while, you get your pattern, you know which way you wanna break it up. So I don't wanna do one, two, three, and an increase, because this is my increase. So what I'll probably do is do maybe do one, then do my increase, then do one, two, three, and then I should have two, um, regular single crochets at the very end over here. Okay. All right. Good luck guys. I'll see you in a little bit. 
Okay, so we made it all the way around with five single crochet and then an increase. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and do a slip stitch all the way around and you're gonna go right into your slip stitch. Um, you might wanna put a stitch marker there just in case you get ahead of yourself. And then we're gonna go ahead and slip stitch all the way around. This will be like the foot of the basket. On this basket, the nice looking, the finished side is on the bottom of the basket. It's a very deep basket. It's not like one that you would have like fruit sitting in where you want the finished part on the top. We're gonna go ahead and put, a, put that, um, that nice side on the bottom of the basket where nobody at all can see it, but <laughs> that's, that's how that is. Maybe, I don't know. It is what it is. Okay. And then after this, we get to start working on our sides. So the really hard part is done. The base um, is really is the hardest part of this. So we should all, we're all thankful that we're done with that for now. I know I've moved my product a lot in these videos and I apologize, but I um, I try really hard to use both of my arms equally. So if one hand gets tired, I will just keep work with this one. And then if that one's tired, I'll do more work on this one. Um, but I do generally try to use them both evenly. So when I'm exhausted, they're both just as exhausted. Okay, go ahead and move our stitch marker here. We're gonna go ahead and come through the back side. Let's bring that up. Like this. Let's go ahead and turn our work. I'm gonna go ahead and just slip that in there so I have a nice place. Now, this is the inside of the basket. And what we wanna do is we wanna do a single crochet all the way around. But when we, when we do our single crochets, we're gonna do a back loop only, not of the slip stitch. Remember, that's like our foot. We're gonna actually come in here and we want to grab this and part of this that is sitting here like this, okay? Um, it is going to be really hard to get this second one that's here. That's not a big deal. We do need this one. That's what's going to really give us some firmness for the corner, um, or for, you know, where we start up the wall. Okay. So go ahead and we're going to just start here. We're going to do back loop and we're going to grab that. And this is a regular single crochet, not the waist coast, of course, because we have nothing down there to do. So go ahead and get that done all the way around. And let's make sure we have 42 stitches. And when you guys are finished, I'll meet you back here. Okay, we slip stitched all the way around. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our hook. This is our slip stitch. It is in front of us facing us. We're gonna go through the back, not on the slip stitch round. That's gonna be on the single crochet round. We're gonna go ahead and grab our yarn and we're gonna pull it through a slip stitch yarn and then from here we're gonna if you were gonna change colors right now is where you would pull your white in and through I'm staying with the same color I'm gonna grab my orange pull that through now we are going to be going underneath we're gonna go back one step because that's what we have always been doing we're gonna go through the loop and you want to make sure that you're going through this little part right here, one of these strands right here, it's gonna give us the girth. Do not be deceived when you do the slip stitches. You are only going to have 41 slip stitches because remember we are counting posts um, when we're doing the waistcoat, not the top of the stitches we're used to doing. Okay, so let's go ahead and do one. Remember to get grab that. We really need that. Two. And now we're gonna go all the way around. Okay. 
So here I have the back loop and the first one. Like I said, this second knot right here is a very hard to, um, to grab. Um, so go ahead and just do the best that you guys can. The lighting on this is something awful today. I don't know why it's doing that, but oh well. So make sure we have 42 stitches all the way around. And this is back loop only, and don't forget to get that back bump. That's, a, that's in the back there, at least one of the back bumps. And I will meet you guys around this when you guys are finished. All right, here we are, we're back. Now, this round, of course, we are now counting our posts. So this first one, this one here that we went in the beginning, this is number one post. So I do have one space left. So yes, on the slip stitches, we're working out to only having 41, but now that we're talking posts again, oh, I'm stuck. Um, we are going to have 42. There we go. And now we're gonna do the same thing we were doing when we were doing the base. So let's go ahead and pull it out. Go to this top stitch, grab the yarn, pull it through. Grab the working yarn, pull that through, and we're gonna go straight down. And it's always, when you go in, it's always just a tad bit behind your work. Think about where your tail is coming out of, and that will help you remember that that's where that's gonna go. Um, okay, so now on this round here, the nose is, the instructions have you crochet a nose in. So you're gonna do all of this. You're gonna pull in black, do one stitch, go back to white, blah, blah, blah. This is what I don't like about it at all. Do you see how it kind of shows up? From far away, nobody really sees this. But so what I did was I like to do is I'll just crochet all the way, keep crocheting, and then I'm gonna come back and put this on top of my stitch. I like it a lot better. And I don't have to worry about it playing peekaboo back here in these sections back here. So um, if you wanted to go ahead and grab your black and do one stitch, you're gonna do 20 single crochets, then one single crochet of black, and then 21 single crochets of your base color again. In this situation, I'm not doing that. I like to do it at the end. It's easier, I think it looks sharper. So what we're gonna do, this is one, we just made one, and let's go ahead and just go all the way back around with a total 42 stitches. Remember, this is all waist coast again, waist coat stitch again, and I will meet you guys back here. When you come back, you might wanna grab a piece of paper and something to write with so that I can go ahead and give you these numbers so that you're not sitting here waiting for me to tell you what the next number is on the round. I'm just gonna go ahead and show you a couple um, a couple different things and then let you guys do your own thing until we need to come back and get more instruction. Okay, so I will see you guys then. Good luck. Okay, back around. Um, and now we're going to go ahead and connect again the same way. Take hook off of your loop, come into the back, pull it through. Very nice. Straight in, pull up a loop, swap your yarn. A couple times, have you guys probably noticed, I don't think I even swapped my yarn, but I don't think it makes any difference. I haven't seen a big difference. One of the big problems is this loop, not having this loop being too big. Oh, Okay, and then spin your hook. I can tell though, I think I didn't spin it last time. Well, as you can see, it worked out. So, again, okay, and then we pull it through. Okay, so now what we'd like to do is, um, we are gonna start incorporating our accent color or other color. I'm using white and orange, so that's gonna be the V part of the head. Um, go ahead and we're gonna do 19 single crochets we want 19 posts um completed 
and then we're going to go ahead and pull in our next color. So let's go ahead and get that done and I'll meet you guys when we're ready to grab the new color. Okay, this is halfway through my 19th single crochet. I'm going to, or waistcoat stitch. This is all waistcoat stitch, okay? So I keep saying it the wrong way. Go ahead and pull our white through. Let's tighten up our orange. Now, you want to tuck your, your t-shirt yarn as we go. The white is only going to be tucked right here, and the yellow is going to be tucked, worked, 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 tucked, etc. I'll show you guys. So right now we have three stitches. We want to tuck our orange because we're going to need it again. And we're going to do three stitches in white. Get half of the third stitch done. Okay, and let's pull our orange through to finish off that stitch. And we will tighten up our orange, or our white, okay? Now we're gonna go ahead and finish off. We should have 20 orange stitches left. Leave the white. Do not bring the white with you. We are gonna grab our tail, and we have already tucked our orange, so we're good to go. So let's go ahead and finish up here. So what I'd like you guys to do, and I'm gonna meet you guys back here so we're not wasting any time. Go ahead and finish your 20 single crochets around this way. And then I am gonna meet you back here all the way with orange till you're right here, one shy of this white, okay? And then I'll give you guys some numbers. I'm gonna show you a couple tricks and then leave you guys for a while to go ahead and crochet on your own and I'll give you the numbers you need. Okay, so we are now 18 stitches. The last one was 19. We're at 18 stitches. We wanna bring our white through. We're gonna leave our orange. We're gonna grab our white that we left hanging there. And we're gonna bring that white up against this and back through in here. Okay, so what I do is I go ahead and finish the stitch off. And then I want to make sure this is long enough that I can tuck it up like this. Can you guys see that? Instead of it laying like this, I have missed it before. This is very important. I've missed it before and the inside of your basket looks terrible. You want to tuck this white all the way to this white stitch. And we got to bring our orange with us as well. So we've got the white and the orange and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do five white. One. Always look, make sure you have your white. When you start getting towards the end is where you're going to lose your white. Um, that's the most common place. So you want to be aware of that because you want the inside of your basket to look just as good. So I'm going to go ahead and get my hand in here. I'm going to grab that white. Make sure that it's tucked up in there. And we're going to do, there we go. And then one more, correct? Now we should only have orange. We're going to do half of that stitch. We're going to drop our white, bring through our orange. And then we're going to proceed with our orange. So you guys saw how I did that. Um, the best way, so now see the inside is going to look like, it's really going to look sharp, the inside of that basket, as well as the outside of the basket. So what you guys want to do is you guys want to keep doing this exact thing and we're gonna go to from five, we're gonna add one on each side all the way around until we have 15 whites, okay? So if you guys want the numbers, I'll read them off to you real quick so that you guys can jot them down. If you're having trouble with your counts or you think you're missing stitches somewhere, um, I'll go ahead and give them to you. But in reality, if all of you guys are doing good and everything's working out, you're gonna do this, orange, white, orange, you're gonna add one white every round, one on each side. So really, literally two whites. So one on each side, all the way around, till you guys have 15 of these wide. 
So we, we did this one, which is the five. We would have 18 single crochets, five whites, and 19, okay? Next row is going to be 17, 7, and 18, then 16, 9, 17, 15, 11, 16, then the next round, 14, 13 white, and then 15. And the last one, till we get back together, is going to be 13 in the orange, 15 in the white, and 14 in the orange. I will meet you guys back here when we've got a lot more girth here. We're sticking up like this. And um, then we can move on to what the next step is and getting our ears. And um, we pretty much got the hardest part down. I'm sure you guys have noticed it's a lot easier to crochet this um, up and down than it is to do this one here. Um, but okay, good luck guys. And I'll see you back in a while. Okay, so I just did my 15 across here, across the nose. And our next round is going to be solid um, white or whatever the this nose part is for you. So when you finish off your round, go ahead and take that color with you. We would normally drop it. Remember, every other time we've just dropped it. This time we're going to go ahead and bring it with us so that we can change to white or your whatever. Whoop, grabbing the wrong one. Nope, I'm grabbing the right one. See, I'm getting confused myself here. And so once we get back to the beginning on that last stitch, let's go ahead and get that changed over to our, we'll just call it our nose color. And um, I'll meet you guys back there, okay? If you guys have already done that though, um, go ahead and just get it connected and you'll just have an extra little tail to, to sew in. It's not a big deal. All right, see you in a little bit. Okay, so we did our last stitch in orange. So now we're gonna change to our white. So go ahead and pull that out like you would normally do. And let's go into our first stitch here. And we're gonna pull the orange through. And now we're gonna grab the white. We're gonna pull it through the orange, down into the first stitch. White back up. And then we'll spin our Hook. And now we got our first white stitch completed. Well, now we have our first white stitch completed. Um, so I would go ahead and cut my orange and that way you can um, tuck your orange and you're not sewing that in. You're gonna have enough sewing in with just the dang eyes themselves. That's might as well do it, right? Now let's go ahead and do 42 all the way around of our new color and I'll meet you back then, okay? Okay, we made it around. We're getting to our ears now. So let's go ahead and bring our yarn up and through like we've been doing. Go ahead and just start fresh here like we always do. Oh, actually, don't do any of that. I'm so sorry. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so now we're back, are back around. What we're gonna do now is 11 slip stitches, okay? One, And 11 and then we want to chain five second chain from the hook we're gonna do a single crochet then a half Double crochet. And then 
two double crochets in each of the last, not two in each, one double crochet in each of the remaining stitches. So this is the ear that's going up, that's gonna be sticking up. So you want to do this tight um, so that you do have a little bit of firmness on that ear. I always end up having to um, spray them anyway to firm them up, but that's how we're doing it. Okay, then we're gonna skip three stitches. One, two, three. And we're gonna slip stitch in the fourth stitch. Okay. And there's an ear. My Lord, this light, I'm so sorry. Today is something is going on. Okay, and then we're gonna go ahead. After that, we're going to slip stitch 12. Now, this does not always work out. It really depends a lot on what's going on back here. So we just wanna make sure that the second ear that we make is placed in the same place as, as this ear that we have right now. So it looks like we're pulling out of this stitch here that has four single crochets. So let's go ahead and just slip stitch over. The pattern says 12, but I don't think I'm gonna get 12 here. Two, three, four, five, Okay, so this one would be my 10th slip stitch. And so we are not definitely not gonna have 12 in between here. We can either come back and pull our ear back a little further um, this direction um, and then do our 12. We just wanna make sure, right? You don't wanna get done and your ears are not um, in the same spot as they should be. So, um, this one is ending, the actual ear is ending on three. So we wanna see 10, let's do 11, let's do 12, there's the three. Okay, so you see here, this is where our ear is ending, right here. Let's see how this looks if I slip here and do this five. It's not really hard to do, so if we need to move it, we'll just go ahead and move it. Single crochet. half and two double crochets in each of the remaining you know what i mean i know that's not coming out right okay we're going to skip three stitches one two three and we're going to slip stitch to the fourth stitch now let's go ahead and get our ears popped up I always, like I said, I always starch these anyway. But wow, that looks good. So here we are on three here and one, two, three. Here's where this is coming out of. And here's the three, the one, two, three. So I think that right there turned out great, but I only had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 11 in between instead of 12. And that's fine. So then we're gonna go ahead and continue to slip stitch the rest of the way around to the beginning. And um, believe it or not, now I bumped my light, we really can't see. Um, and then we're going to fasten off and we're gonna go ahead and do our nose and our eyes. So I will uh, let you guys finish that, go ahead and get. Now the eyes, they recommend a regular like four ply, but um, I don't know, I kind of liked um, on the bigger, on this basket, I didn't mind having a little piece of darker colored of the t-shirt yarn, and I used that on the last one. So I'll just kind of show you um, the difference here in a minute, and you can kind of decide what you want to do. Okay. Well, I just realized I might want to show you guys just one more time how to do this. Um, Okay, so we did our last slip stitch. We're gonna pull the yarn. We're gonna go from the back, I'm so sorry. 
from the back to the front here. And then the stitch that this is coming out of, my lighting today, go back into the middle here. I am so sorry this is like this today. And we're gonna go through here and try to get down in here. If you can't, you're gonna, you're gonna sew it in anyway, so you're okay. And that just created that last, looks like the last slip stitch, looks great. Okay, so sew those in, I'll meet you here in a minute. Okay, so here's the difference. Um, this one here, I did really tight and both of the yarns that I was, or the, the t-shirts that I was using were cut really thin. So this one is the same exact pattern. I just did it with a smaller hook and the, the t-shirt yarn itself was thinner. And that's how this one turned out. This one, which looks quite a bit bigger, was done with the eight millimeter hook that we had just used. And this gray was a lot thicker type of t-shirt um, that was cut, it was cut a lot thicker. So that's how this ended up. It's gonna be really hard unless you're using the exact same um, spool of t-shirt. And even that, even then there's thin spots and there's thick spots. But so this is the smaller one that came out and it is about, it's only about four and a half inches high. And this one has regular black, like four ply yarn right there. Um, the nose, I did grab a piece of black. Remember, I was we were talking about that earlier, but it was it kind of shows. But this one here is like five and a half inches tall. And on this one, I actually just used a piece of the darker t-shirt, and I I think it looks fine. It might have been like if I it might have been too thick for this smaller one, but this bigger one, it looks I think it looks size appropriate. And then all I did was come back and go ahead and take that dark around and around. Um, here I went off the one to the top of the third row of white and I went over four stitches and then I did two little V's on each side. Then what you need to do when you're done is get back in here and tie this all up and uh, sew it in and do the best you can to hide it the best you can. There really is no way to do it. It is gonna be what it is, but just try to make it as clean as you possibly can. Um, and there's your guys' basket. This one still is needs to be sprayed. I haven't um, wet this down yet and sprayed this yet. So it's not sitting exactly like I'd like it to. My bottom's still a little kind of floppy. That will go away once I spray it with my starch. Um, I get it wet, I spray it down. I get it wet by spraying it down, don't get it wet. And then I just let it dry and it comes out real nice and sharp. So thanks again, guys, you guys for coming and joining me today at Ride is Rain Crochet. And like always, please like, share, and subscribe. See you guys soon.